Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with more Solasta, and this time Tactical Adventures has announced brand new DLC for the game. Solasta Inner Strength will launch on November 14th, and let me say up front, this is an update a lot of you are going to love. As usual, there are chapters down below if you want to skip around to different content. There are new classes in this DLC, but let's save that for last, because I want to dive into their mechanics. Instead, we'll start with what I am honestly most most excited for. Tactical Adventures have added a new race or ancestry as they are called in the game, Dragonborn. Yes, yes, yes. Those of you who watched my original review of Solasta Crown of the Magister know that a major complaint of mine was the uninspired list of original ancestries. Dragonborn is a strong step in the right direction and they look absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, no details were released regarding what buffs or debuffs your character will get for choosing this option, but I will definitely share that information once it becomes available. The same day this DLC releases, every player will also get a free content upgrade. This will include three new backgrounds, the ascetic, the artist, and the occultist. Please note, even if you play Crown of the Magister with these backgrounds, they will not have quests, unlike your other background options. 17 new feats will also be added to the game, and they are designed to specifically help martial classes. Boss monsters have been added to the dungeon creator. And finally, an update I am sure many of you have been looking forward to, gamepad support will be available on the PC. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about the three new classes that have been added to the game. The classes are Bard, Warlock, and Monk, and each of them has four subclasses. One subclass in each class can only be unlocked if you have purchased the Lost Valley DLC. Also, Tactical Adventures hosted a live community competition where they picked a fan-made archetype that was an expanded into a subclass for each class. I will leave a link to that live stream below. They also provided new illustrations for archetypes that were chosen and other cool archetypes that didn't make the cut from an artist named Lahild. I will use those illustrations as the background while walking through mechanics. As far as subclasses, Solasta only provided mechanics information regarding the archetypes that came out of the community stream. It's fun to review that type of information, so I have pulled the D&D 5th edition mechanics for most of the subclasses listed. Of course, the final mechanics might differ from this, but I will definitely cover the DLC when it launches and let you know what changes have been made. Starting with the Bard, its subclasses are College of Lore, College of Hope, College of Heroism, and College of Tradition. College of Lore is for bards who know something about most things and have a wide depth of knowledge. At level 3, you will gain proficiency with three skills of your choice. In addition, you will get Cutting Words. When a creature that you can see within 12 cells makes an attack roll, ability check, or damage roll, you can use your reaction to expend one of your uses of Bardic Inspiration. Rolling a Bardic Inspiration die and subtracting the number rolled from the creature's roll. Bardic Inspiration allows you to choose an ally within 12 cells and give them a d6 die that can be used on their next ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. At level 6, you gain additional magical secrets, allowing you to learn two spells of your choice from any class. A spell you choose must be of a level you can cast, as shown on the bar table, or a cantrip. College of Hope is for bards who prefer to focus on survival of both the body and the soul. At level 3, you gain Comforting Touch. When you touch a willing creature, you can expend one use of your Bardic Inspiration to grant them 2d6 temporary hit points for 10 minutes. In addition, you will gain Calming Words. Whenever you speak kindly to a humanoid for one hour, they will have advantage on Wisdom saving throws against being frightened, and you will have advantage on Charisma Persuasion and Deception rolls against them. At level 6, you will gain Song of Warmth. When a humanoid dies within 6 cells of you, you can use your reaction to hum a sweet melody that lures the target soul into a glass container 
in your possession. Once trapped, you can use an action to create a telepathic bond, allowing you to communicate with the target's soul. Yikes. College of Heroism is the community archetype, and it's for bards who aren't content just telling stories, they absolutely must be part of it. Their thundering voice ensures their allies are always at their best, and at their side, even the most cowardly soldiers become stalwart combatants. At level 3, you will get Bolster Morale. When an ally uses one of your Bardic Inspiration dice, they roll twice and pick the highest result. Also at level 3, you will get Heroic Tale. Use an action to bolster an ally you can see within 6 cells for 1 minute. They gain advantage on all saving throws and immunity against frighten and fear effects. At level 6, you will get Thundering Voice. Whenever you grant a Bardic Inspiration to an ally, the closest enemy within 12 cells must make a Wisdom saving throw or take 1d8 Charisma modifier Thunder damage and have disadvantage on their next attack roll. I was unable to find any information on College of Tradition, so I believe this is a unique subclass that Tactical Adventures have created for the game. You must purchase Lost Valley for access to this subclass. Next is Warlock, and its subclasses are The Fiend, The Hive, The Timekeeper, and The Tree. The Fiend subclass is for those who have made a pact with a fiend from the lower planes of existence, a being whose aims are evil, even if you strive against those aims. As a fiend, you will get to choose from an expanded list of spells when you learn a warlock spell. At level 1, you gain Dark One's Blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to 0 hit points, you gain temporary hit points equal to your charisma modifier plus your warlock level. At level 6, you gain Dark One's Own Luck. When making an ability check or saving throw, you can add D10 to your roll. At level 10, you get Fiendish Resilience. You gain resistance against one selected damage type. The next subclass is the Hive, and I am not sure if it's going to be based on the Hive Queen or the Hive Mind. I flipped a coin, and we'll say they are going to use the Hive Mind. Your patron is the hive mind of an illithid community. You have been accepted and are learning from it while it learns about all that you do, writing your mind. As a hive mind, you will get to choose from an expanded list of spells when you learn a warlock spell. At first level, you get mental training. When you cast a spell, you can choose to do so psionically, causing the spell to require no verbal or somatic components for that casting. At level 6 you gain psionic intrusion. You can communicate telepathically with any creature you can see within 12 cells of you. At level 10 you get mental blast. You can use your action to send a mental blast at a hostile creature within range of your telepathy. The creature must make a save against your DC or will have disadvantage on all attacks until the end of its turn and any creatures attacking it will have advantage on their rolls. Next is a subclass I am most excited for, the Timekeeper. Timekeepers are strange and mysterious entities who exist beyond the fabric of time and space. You've made a pact with one, allowing you to make small adjustments in the endless flow of the river of time, as unnatural as it may sound. Any Doctor Who fans in the community? No additional spells are listed in the write-up for this class, so Tactical Adventures might not have figured that part out yet, or perhaps they are not going to use it. At level 1, you get Curse of Time. Enemies you damage will take half of your proficiency bonus in force damage at the start of their turn for the next minute. At level 6, you get Time Shift. After taking damage, you can, as a reaction, disappear into a time rift and heal back the damage you received. At level 10, you get Accelerate. You can use a bonus action to give an ally haste until the start of your next turn. I believe the tree is a unique subclass as I was not able to find any information on it and you must have the Lost Valley DLC in order to use it. Quick note before we go over the monk subclasses, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my video spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. The last class is monk and its subclasses are way of the open hand, way of survival, way of light, 
and way of freedom. Monks of the way of the open hand are the ultimate masters of martial arts combat, whether armed or unarmed. They learn techniques to push and trip their opponents, manipulate key to heal damage to their bodies, and practice advanced meditation that can protect them from harm. At level 3, you will gain open hand technique. Whenever you hit a creature with one of the attacks gained by your flurry of blows, if it fails a save, you can knock the enemy prone or push it away from you. You also have the option of preventing that creature from taking reactions until the end of your next turn. Flurry of Blows allows you, after an attack action, to spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. At level 6, you gain wholeness of body. As an action, you can regain hit points equal to three times your monk level. At level 11, you gain Tranquility. At the end of a long rest, you gain the effects of the Sanctuary spell. While in this state, whenever you are attacked, the hostile creature must make a Wisdom saving throw, and if it fails, they must either choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. Monks who follow the Way of Light help to keep isolated settlements safe from the many creatures of the dark that lurk around. At level 3, you get Luminous Key. You learn light and shine cantrips. Additionally, whenever you hit a creature with one of the attacks granted by Flurry of Blows, they automatically start emitting bright light until the end of your turn. At level 6, you gain Radiant Strikes. Anytime you strike a target affected by Shine or Luminous Key, you deal an additional 1d4 Radiant Damage. At level 11, you get Blinding Flash. As a bonus action, you can spend 2 key points to generate a burst of blinding light that forces all creatures within 3 cells of you to roll a Constitution saving throw. Anyone who fails takes 3d6 radiant damage and becomes blinded until the end of your next turn. Unfortunately, I could not find any information about Way of Survival. Way of Freedom is only available if you have the Lost Valley DLC, and it also appears to be a unique subclass, so Monk might have two unique subclasses unlike Warlock and Bard. That is all the information I have regarding the Celasta Inner Strength DLC. I look forward to sharing even more information with you on November 14th when this content is available. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.